Get ready for your daily dose of WordPress and web development tips, tricks, and insights to help you find success with WordPress. You're listening to WP The Podcast with your hosts, David Blackman and Tim Streifler. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of WP The Podcast brought to you by WP Gears. I'm Tim Streifler and my co-host David Blackman is still out for the time being, but he will be back with us soon in uh, a couple of more episodes. Uh, And so today's episode, we're going to be talking about the importance of the follow-up to close more web design deals. Uh, If you've been listening to WP The Podcast for a while, you know that we love talking about uh, things that typically aren't talked about on WordPress podcasts, and that's things like business and sales and marketing and um, kind of the things that are outside of directly WordPress. So for example, a lot of our listeners are building websites for clients using WordPress, using page builders like Divi. And so we try to talk about things that uh, will help our listeners grow their business, get more clients and that sort of thing. And so actually David and I have a course called the Divi Business Expert that teaches Uh, you how to build a business around using a theme like Divi, a page builder, and WordPress uh, to uh, streamline your workflow and and get more clients. And so in today's episode, I wanted to talk about the follow-up. So David and I both have significant sales experience. David for 20 plus years, me for uh, probably about a quarter of that. Uh, But that's something that I feel like um, the follow-up is something that we kind of get... It, the follow-up gets overlooked, essentially. Um, people talk about you know being able to close deals, but the follow-up is such a, a crucial part of being a good salesperson. And so kind of what prompted this is I, I recently moved, new house. We've been doing some remodeling or in the process of, of getting remodeling. And so I've been having a lot of contractors over at the house uh, looking at things, okay, the flooring, taking measurements or, or the paint. Uh, uh, window coverings, that sort of thing, and then uh, putting together estimates for us, right? And of course, just like any responsible person, I don't just get one quote, I get multiple, so I can compare and and figure out which one is providing the best value. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, because throughout this process, it's, I'm reminded of all, like, a bunch of things that are, like, big no no's, like, not to do when it comes to business. And so, um, it, yeah, it's kind of prompted a, a couple of really good episodes that can relate to uh, web design. Cause at the end of the day, it's when you're a small business service provider, a lot of the principles for getting clients, closing deals, uh, and running a, a solid business, a lot of them are same, the same. Doesn't matter if you're building websites or if you're, uh, a, uh, in, interior residential painter or uh, doing um, flooring and whatever. So your contractor, uh, a lot of the principles are the same. And so today we want to talk about the follow-up because multiple companies that came, spent time, came to my house, measured, put together estimates, and then sent me, you know, the price and then never followed up you know, never heard from them again. And then on the flip side, I had a couple that did a really good job of, of following up and, you know, encouraging me to, uh, essentially commit, uh, and, 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 you know, the, trying to close the deal. Uh, one company, for example, they sent me the quote within a half hour of them sending the quote, I emailed them back multiple questions that I had. Cause there was like one thing that was missing. And then I was talking, I, uh, ask about uh, you know a couple other things and then my last question was when can you start like it doesn't get like that's like the most buying question possible like when can you start I'm ready take my money type of question and I didn't hear back for several days and then I followed up uh, and they said, oh, sorry for the delay. And they said, no, you know, uh, you know, we, we didn't measure for, you know, that thing, blah, blah, blah. And then didn't answer my other questions, didn't answer when can you start. And then that was it. Oh, oh, and they said, oh, well, we didn't include that, but we will. Um, I'll send you an updated estimates shortly. Never got the updated estimate, never heard from them again. And I was ready to buy. And so we ended up going with another company that, 
at least seemed like they wanted our business and they were, you know, working for it and, you know, following up with us and everything. And so, um, it's so easy to kind of, uh, you know, basically put the ball, uh, in the cl- potential client's court, so to speak, um, and kind of let them be the one to decide whether they, you know, are interested. And, you know, you send them an estimate and, and kind of have the mentality of, well, if they want to buy from me, if they want me to build their website, they'll reach out to me. And that's a terrible way <laughs> to grow your business and land deals. Um, you have to follow up. Anyone who's had a dedicated sales position knows that you will not close many deals unless you follow up. Yes, occasionally you'll get people that are like they're ready and they're like, uh, you know, super motivated and they'll just like be ready to go without you having to follow up. But most of the time you have to follow up. Uh, it's like people love to buy, but they hate being sold to. And so you can't be pushy, but you have to give them the opportunity to buy, you know, by following up. And so, um, yeah, I think that's really, really important. You can't just send an estimate out there and expect people to, to reach out to you. You have to do it, um, tastefully so you don't again don't want to be pushy you don't want to pressure them because that'll just turn them off but you want you want to be respectful and then also uh, something that I think doesn't get talked about a lot is provide a clear path for next steps so rather than just saying hey you know did you decide whether you want to do this or not you know instead you say hey reaching back out I'm really hoping we can do this. I'm really excited to build your website. Uh, I have a lot of ideas and I think we're going to work well together. Uh, Here's the next steps. Sign the uh, agreement, uh, pay the online deposit, and then I will be ready to go to work for you, you know, next week or or, or whatever. So yeah, they have a very clear picture of what's going to happen next. That makes it really easy for them because a lot of times people won't have any idea of, of what the future looks like of, of what it would look like to, to work with you on building a new website. And so if you make it really clear and make it easy, it takes away that doubt. It takes away that fear component and it makes it so they want to pull the trigger. And so it's kind of like there's uh, an old sales phrase. um, I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink, Um, which is true. You can, uh, you know, get them really close and and ready, but they have to be the ones to pull the trigger and, uh, you know, pay the deposit and, and make that decision. But a lot of times people, they, they don't do that first part. They don't lead them to the water. Um, and so that's where the follow-up comes in and, and being diligent and, and showing them what that path looks like to, uh, moving forward and, and, and getting a, a website done by you. So I hope that was helpful. Um, we probably circle back, uh, in the future, uh, for something like this, uh, once David is back because David is a wealth of sales knowledge. And so he'll probably have some additional points to add to what we talked about today. And so, uh, stay tuned for that. But, um, in the meantime, we have more awesome WordPress web design business topics in the future. Uh, so, uh, tune in tomorrow. We're going to talk about the difference between avoiding scope creep and nickel and dime in your clients. That might sound, uh, kind of different and I'll explain what that means and kind of the background behind tomorrow's topic. So tune in tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. We've come to the end of today's episode of WP the podcast. Join us tomorrow for more daily tips and strategies designed to help you run your WordPress business towards success. Remember to subscribe to WP the podcast so you can stay up to date with each episode. And don't forget to rate and review us. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on WP The Podcast.